Pro wrestling is an ever-evolving industry, with encyclopedias being updated, documentaries being released, and relationships mended or destroyed. The attitudes and narratives of wrestling superstars begin to change. Individuals like The Ultimate Warrior, Bruno San Martino, and others are brought back into prominence while the history of some of the other bright characters are being washed away or changed. Some are pigeonholed and being remembered for that one event or that one specific moment in time. Others become as insignificant as a crossword answer. My job as PWP's resident historian is to remind you of the impact that these individuals and teams left on the industry. This is PW Profiles. During the 70s and 80s, it was fairly common for a professional wrestler to have a look. No one had the look like Polish power Ivan Putski. Is this, is this someone that you're uh, familiar with at all? Uh, no. Putski no, I see. Like, he like, sounds like Putz. <laughs> He's actually one of those that's kind of been lost to time. We talked about Pedro Morales on that episode. Um, but Putski's one of those, especially with his credentials, that seems to have just faded away. He debuted in 1968, and in 1974, he went to the AWA. Uh, later on in the year, he showed up in the WWF, where he would spend the majority of his career. He actually won the Tag Team Championships with Tito Santana in 1979, defeating the Valiants. Jimmy and Johnny. Ivan Putski was always, um, he'd have made event spots, but he'd usually be used in a mid-card role, a tag team role. Uh, he took a hiatus in 1986, but then he returned to be a jobber to the stars in 1987. From there on, he, there wasn't much to do until he came back to wrestling in 1991 and, and 1992. And finally, in 1995, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, which, to me, I mean, yeah, he won the tag title, but at this time, they were only inducting, like, the who's who. Arnold Scotland, Andre the Giant, Fabulous Mula, Bobo Brazil, just to name a few. So for Ivan Putsky to be included in this group, that showed the love that Vince Jr. had for the man. Uh, he actually... Defeated Jerry Lawler and Grandmaster Sexay with his son, Scott Putsky, on an episode of Raw in 1997. And he eventually retired in 1999. Ivan Putsky, and I've said this with multiple of these. Again, I learned of him from the Legends of Wrestling games. Um, he was just, he was a common looking guy. Uh, as I said, he just had all this muscle, this look. He's a character that I just want to be. I, you didn't know much about him. You just wanted to be him. Um, he had somewhat of a quick career. I mean, nothing truly of note besides winning that tag team title. He did feud with Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, and Ivan Koloff because he was a babyface for many years. I always find it funny that he and Tito Santana and Tito Santana's rookie year won the tag titles because that just shows how long Tito stayed in the industry. Um, Ivan Putski, the reason he's called Polish Power was because he was a strong man participating in the 1978 World Strongest Man competition, finishing eight, but in a field of 10 competitors. I still think you have to do quite a bit to qualify for those, so not taking anything away from the man. Um, as I said, he and Tito won the tag titles. They were ranked 92nd in PWI's top 10 tag or top 100 tag teams of the PWI years in 2003. And although he had kind of a mid card career, he was 170th of 500 for the PWI years in 2003 for singles wrestlers. Ivan Putski is one of those, although he's not remembered like the Iron Sheik, like Jesse Ventura, like Hulk Hogan, he did play a part in the golden age of wrestling. And if you're ever on YouTube or even on the now Peacock, former WWE Network, 
definitely search out some Ivan Putsky Ivan Putsky matches as he is a man that helped to define an era. Which is why Mr. Putsky is a PW profile. <laughs> 